Hello? Hey, hey, train boy. This is Mattel. Just calling to let you know we actually have some... What? You know, I'm completely and totally biased in saying this, but the Thomas toys were better when I was a kid. Thomas Wooden Railway, Tommy Blue Track, the original Trackmaster, they were all great. Kids nowadays do not get that same treatment. And the best example I think for that is Thomas Wood, or what I would call uh, doing a wine tasting without using your mouth, but instead your eyeballs. Painful. I got the diesel tin at entertainment for a joke, and... I have no clue where he is now. He could be plotting my demise as we speak. And as a whole, it was a brand I just really wasn't connected with. I really liked the older stuff. For example, these guys, the original Wooden Railway stuff, which in my opinion is just, you know, like I said, the best. Oops. And when you put this up against a product like this, need I say more? So when I found out Wooden Railway was getting another reboot, I was quite skeptical, you know, especially after the entire Thomas Wood debacle. Lo and behold, we find out Wooden Railway is actually coming back, but not in the style that I grew up with. Recently, there's been a complete and total redesign on the Wooden Railway characters, as well as the brand as a whole. It's actually called Wooden Railway again, as opposed to Thomas Wood, which is like, yeah. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have not only the Thomas to talk about, but the Percy, which is my favorite, and Gordon as well. I am hoping to get James at some point, but I have these three. I'm not going to complain. Jokes aside, Percy comes from Entertainment as well as Gordon, and Thomas comes from Amazon Overnight Delivery. And he really wants to come out of the box, apparently. So let's just jump into this review. The only proper way to start this review is by talking about the packaging these three come in, which in every way is phenomenal. When I first saw them, I thought we were getting actual wooden crates that the locomotives came in, and unfortunately that is not really the case. These are all cardboard and made to look as if they are wood, but realistically if they actually were wood, that would probably make them pretty heavy and expensive to ship, so good thinking on their part. And the wooden part actually slides out so you can get a view of the locomotive inside of it. You also can do beautiful things like this. It's also just very fun to open. But you don't really have to open them to see what's on the inside. The front features beautiful illustrations of the models already. As well as a Thomas Wooden Railway logo, my Percy box features a silver heart since he's a gift for my fiancé, and the back features all of the hazards in multiple different languages. The bottom of the box is very much the same, and the top of the box features another Thomas Wooden Railway logo, as well as a picture of the new clickety-clack track, which I'm super excited that they're bringing back, but I don't really have any of now, in terms of the new stuff at least. However, that's enough talking about the boxes, let's go ahead and get into the engines. Now, just like everyone else, there's things I like about these models, and things I find a little bit weird. But I can't really say there's anything I dislike or that I hate about any of them. Or at least these three. Since I got Percy first, I guess we'll start with him. This has to be my favorite Wooden Railway Percy to ever be released, for a multitude of different reasons. Let's go ahead and get the obvious out of the way. He has a surprised face, which if you know me, you know uh, I'm all for. But the model itself is significantly more detailed than anything we've ever seen before. He features rivet detailing, a lot more printed on his sides, but there's a little bit more to it than just what's been printed on him. This is the first Wooden Railway Percy to feature its own unique chassis. Previously, the Percy chassis were Thomas chassis just with the middle wheel removed. This is made not only to replicate Percy's unique wheelbase, but because of that is the first actually proportionate Percy we've ever gotten in this range. He's asymmetrical and overall just has the perfect proportions to what Percy should have. And holy shit, that was a lot of repetition. I'm proud of myself. I couldn't even say repetition, though. 
what is wrong with me right now? That aside, the only plastic parts I can find on Percy are the smoke box, the coal detailing on the back, and the wheels. Which all was to be expected, except the coal load which I believe is a new feature. And the most apparent new feature that a lot of people don't like, and I have to say I I'm pretty much with them, is the wheels, which are quite large and overall very bulky. Some people say these kill the models, and in my opinion, they really don't, but they are very strange and different to look at. I'm definitely a fan of the prior style in that regard. They do feature a little bit more detailing, and while they are pretty chunky, the models themselves are chunky as well, so perhaps it's just to accommodate that. The point still stands though, they are very shocking to look at. I personally don't think they subtract from the model though. And with that, let's move on to Gordon. Now with Gordon, it's pretty much the same as Percy. He has a plastic smoke box, a plastic coal load in his tinder, as well as plastic wheels, but my favorite part about Normally that's easier. But my favorite part about Gordon, kind of like Percy, is his bogeys and his surprised face, oops. Not only does Gordon feature a separate front bogey, but a six-wheeled bogey in the back, as well as a six-wheeled tender. And just like Percy, he has a punch of detail added onto him that the prior didn't have. I don't really know if this is a critique, but my Gordon model happened to have a little bit of rough wood in some places, so the paint didn't really lay the uh, smoothest. But this is a wood model, so that's kind of to be expected. A lot of what I said with Percy is going to carry on with the other models. He's a lot more detailed than the previous, has a much more unique chassis, and at least to me, and this is probably just the bulkiness, feels very powerful to look at. The big in Gordon the Big Engine is very much emphasized with this model, and honestly good on them for that, that's one of his more iconic traits. He features some pretty basic side rod detailing, kinda like I said before, a whole lot of bulk, and much like Percy has to be one of my favorite renditions to ever have been made. And from that, let's move on to Thomas. Now, I've only had Thomas for two days now. He's one of the more recent purchases. And everything I said about the previous two is going to carry on with Thomas, but there's not really, unfortunately, as much to say. What I can say is this. This Thomas feels very durable. He's very thick, he has a good bit of weight to him, and I forgot to mention this with the previous two, but the chassis are built in a pretty cool way that allow the wheels to make pretty sharp radiuses and turns. So this Thomas model is perfect for any kid who would want to play with it. That aside though, is also perfect for any Thomas and Friends fan or collector who would just want a cool model to have. You guys know me, I'm more of a modeler than anything. So these guys are just going to sit on the shelf with the other wooden railway models. But honestly, that's fine with me. These guys are beautiful. Just owning them is pretty much enough for me. But I also have to mention, this is probably the first time they've redesigned something and it's actually an improvement. Not only is this Thomas much bigger and like I keep saying, thicker than previous models, but has the ability to fit right at home with anybody, whether you're a collector or someone who actually uses the wooden railway range. However, there's one thing I've not yet talked about, and besides the wheels, it's the one thing I've seen people complain about, and that is the faces, and not really the faces themselves, but more how they're made. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, these are basic shapes with the designs printed onto them, which I assume is done to make making them a little cheaper and a little easier. And I only really have three things to say about this. One, they're giving the models unique expressions, so I'm not gonna complain. Number two, if saving a little bit of money on faces means they can put this much detail into other things, I'm all for it personally. And three, I've seen some people mention that these are based on All Engines Go. And honestly, I don't really think so, at least myself. They do look very animated, but if so, it wouldn't make very much sense. The designs the models have is more CGI oriented in my opinion. So to meddle that with a All Engines Go face just doesn't make very much sense to me. I think instead they're going for a more animated, childlike look. And it just so happens All Engines Go is just that. So the comparison is obviously going to be made, but I don't think that's really what they're going for with this redesign. So at least in my books, this gets the pass. And if you are interested in getting any of these models, I have to say they are very well worth it, at least in my experience. I only have these three. I would like to get James and Diesel at some point. And besides the minor gripes that I've mentioned, there's nothing that I've found that I really hate about these models, which is a huge step up from Thomas Wood in which I hated everything. So if you're on the fence about getting these yourself, if you're asking me, personally, they come highly recommended. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review on these three models.
If you guys did enjoy today's video, be sure to like and subscribe for even more train content. There's always more stuff on the way. Dislike the video if you disliked it. And with all of that being said, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.